China and Russia have reached four new cooperation projects to help Russia quickly resume economic development, and the dollar era may be coming to an end. In this video, let us learn more about it. In the international community, the United States does have a relatively large influence. It is this sense of superiority that allows the United States to have a very serious hegemonic mentality. They even do not hesitate to suppress countries in order to achieve their goals. Especially since the Russia-Ukraine conflict, Western countries, led by the United States, have imposed unscrupulous sanctions on Russia. The Russian economy suddenly fell into a quagmire. Recently, China has made every effort to quickly resume economic development in Russia. It has reached four new cooperation projects with Russia and decided to use RMB for settlement in future cooperation processes. As soon as this news came out, the people in Russia were the happiest, saying that China is the true friend. So what exactly are these four agreements? What good impact will it have on China after it is reached? Entering this century, as Russia's global economic crisis has completely ended, the internal financial order has also changed, and the population's solvency and people's living standards have also improved. In 2001 and 2002, Russia's GDP growth rate was relatively low year-on-year year 5% and 4.3% respectively. In other years, GDP growth has exceeded 6%. The rise in Russia's GDP not only promotes an active domestic market and improves the material living standards of the Russian people, but also increases the demand for Russia's foreign trade commodities. In the first decade of the 21st century, trade cooperation between China and Russia has entered a new period of rapid expansion and development. China and Russia not only benefited a lot, but also attracted talents in the economic and trade fields from both sides. Although the trade between China and Russia has made new breakthroughs and progress, there are still some fundamental issues that have not yet been resolved in the trade between China and Russia. Therefore, the trade between China and Russia may sometimes encounter some minor problems causing the trade effects between China and Russia to be good or bad. One of the most important manifestations of this state is that political development trends frequently change, and political connections are unstable. In 2009, the international trade pattern also underwent tremendous changes. In the past 10 years, the trade relationship between China and Russia has been in a very tense situation. Fortunately, the structure of bilateral trade has improved over the past decade, and investment cooperation in many areas has also been greatly enhanced. Among them, significant results have been achieved in cooperation in the fields of science and technology such as energy, transportation, and aviation. The good situation of Sino-Russian trade in 2010 is no longer comparable. Cooperation in technical fields such as transportation and aviation has achieved remarkable results. The good situation of Sino-Russian trade in 2010 is no longer comparable. The amount of direct trade cooperation between the two sides totaled 55.45 billion US dollars, an increase of 43.1% over the same period last year. Among them, China's import and export amounts to Russia in 2010 were 29.61 billion US dollars and 25.84 billion US dollars respectively maintaining 69% and 21.7% respectively year on year. China and Russia are each other's important strategic trading partners. Since 2018, the total trade volume between China and Russia has continued to grow rapidly, reaching record highs for three consecutive years, exceeding the 100 billion US dollar mark every year. 
According to statistics released by the General Administration of Customs of China on September 7, from January to August 2023, the trade volume between China and Russia increased by 32% year-on-year, reaching 155.101 billion US dollars. Among them, China's exports to Russia were 71.804 billion US dollars, an increase of 63.2%. China's imports from Russia were 83.297 billion US dollars, an increase of 13.3%. Statistics also show that in August, the trade volume between China and Russia was 20.814 billion US dollars. Among them, China's exports to Russia were 9.299 billion US dollars, and China's imports from Russia were 11.515 billion US dollars. Taking into account the past cooperation between China and Russia and the recent cooperation and trade situation between the two sides, we believe that the following four cooperations may promote the recovery of the Russian economy. First, China continues to increase its import of Russian energy. According to previously announced news, China will purchase 250 billion cubic meters of natural gas and 100 million tons of energy from Russia. We believe that this cooperation is mutually beneficial to both China and Russia. From Russia's perspective, its energy exports are not going well under the sanctions imposed by Europe, the United States and other countries. And Russia's energy exports are an important source of finance for the country. Now that it has found China as a big buyer, it is definitely a good thing for Russia. From China's perspective, this can increase our say in Russia and stabilize prices. Especially in the current situation of high oil prices, if this cooperation goes smoothly, it can also stabilize domestic oil prices to a certain extent. Second, China and Russia will have closer cooperation in agricultural products. Here we point out a problem. China currently has a very high self-sufficiency rate in corn, wheat, rice and other food crops and basically does not need to import them. However, due to the current low oil extraction rate of domestic soybeans, it is difficult to achieve a dynamic balance between production and demand. This has also led to China's current high dependence on foreign soybeans in the domestic soybean market and its pricing power in the international market. If Russia can increase exports of soybeans to China, this will definitely be a good thing for the domestic soybean-related industrial chain. Third, China and Russia have increased their exports of beef. According to previous news released by Russia, China and Russia are expected to achieve a trade volume of beef as a single product of 200 billion US dollars in 2024. Fourth, China and Russia have previously signed a currency swap agreement. Let us explain what a local currency swap is. In the international community, if the trade volume between two countries continues to increase, the central banks of the two countries will consider conducting local currency swaps to facilitate normal trade between their countries. It is worth noting that local currency swaps are settled based on the exchange rate of the day. For example, when we signed a local currency swap agreement with Russia, the exchange rate was 1 yuan equal to 12 rubles. If the ruble depreciates, exchanges must be made in accordance with the current agreement. Therefore, from this perspective, this is definitely not a loss for China. In fact, since the beginning of this year, a number of projects that will help promote practical cooperation between China and Russia have been implemented. For example, since June 1st, the Russian port of Vladivostok has been opened to China. On June 2nd, China Qingtong International's first batch of Grain Corridor Russian soybeans arrived at the Manshuli port. 
The pickup ceremony was held at the loading yard of Manshuli Station, marking the official operation of the China Russia New Land Corridor Project. On July 7, the launching ceremony of the China Russia Arctic Route Container Liner was held in Moscow. In addition, in the past year, the Tongjiang Railway Bridge and the Heiha Highway Bridge have been opened to traffic, and multiple border ports have been opened. This has also laid the foundation for larger scale economic and trade activities between China and Russia. It is not difficult to see that China is giving Russia what it wants most, which is economic assistance to Russia. The United States cannot stop China and Russia's active trade activities. In fact, the frequent transactions between China and Russia have ushered in variables in the dollar era, which is reflected in the impact of the hegemony of the dollar. Previously, bulk commodities represented by oil and natural gas in the international community had to use the US dollar as the trading currency. But now, whether China and Russia use rubles or renminbi for transactions, they will have an impact on the hegemony of the US dollar. With the frequent trade between China and Russia, the dollarization has become the main theme of subsequent trade exchanges between the two countries. Considering the current international situation, Russia is currently demanding that the EU the United States and the international community must use rubles for transactions when importing Russian energy. How could this not usher in changes in the dollar era? If other countries bypass the US dollar and use rubles for transactions, this will also make the United States position very embarrassing. In addition, the United States has previously relied on the dominance of the U.S. dollar to absorb a lot of international capital. But when the status of the U.S. dollar no longer exists, it means that international capital will withdraw one after another, which will inevitably affect the U.S. financial order and the normal development of the U.S. economy. In addition, Part of the reason why China chooses to help Russia economically is that if Russia is really defeated by Western economic sanctions, then not surprisingly, the next target of the United States and the West will only be China. This is already an indisputable fact. After all, in the context of China and the United States being locked in a comprehensive game, in order to contain China's development, the United States can say that it uses every possible means to suppress and sanction China. In addition to sanctioning Chinese companies in the economic and trade fields, the United States is also fanning the flames and stirring up trouble in the Taiwan Strait, South China Sea and Peninsula issues in the military field and continues to stir up regional tensions. Its purpose is nothing more than to contain China. Recently, the United States and South Korea conducted a large-scale joint amphibious landing exercise in the Yellow Sea. You know, China is the largest country along the Yellow Sea. This move by the United States and South Korea is undoubtedly putting bayonets under China's nose. Not only is it highly provocative, it also poses a great threat to China's national security. Under such circumstances, once Russia collapses under the containment of the United States and the West, the United States and the West will inevitably be free to deal with China. At that time, China may fall into an isolated and helpless situation. To a certain extent, China gives Russia what it wants most and helps Russia economically. This is also a way to counter the United States and the West. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more great content. See you next time.